palpation of trachea, I should fix the patient's head and flex his neck and by feeling the tracheal rings, now I am going to insinuate the finger in between the trachea and sternocleidomastoid and I should uh, see the space in between. So to whichever uh, side trachea is deviated, on that side the space is reduced. Once again see, I am feeling the tracheal rings. I am then insinuating the finger in between the trachea and sternocleidomastoid and I am seeing for reduction in space. So for clinical examination, this is important. Pulling lesions where trachea can be pulled towards same side of disease, fibrosis, collapse. Pushing lesion where trachea is pushed to opposite side of the disease. So disease might be on right side, tracheal position will be towards the opposite or left side or vice versa. Pleural effusion, pneumothorax. And a disease with no significant change in position, consolidation. Palpation of chest movements. There are two types of chest movements. In the upper portion, you can see a pump handle movement, which is up and down motion. In the rest of the chest, we notice a bucket handle type movement, which is generally sidewards motion. So these movements or something observed, it is due to the internal anatomy of the ribs, intercostal muscles. Coming to the clinical examination, in the upper portion, I am going to place my hands like this and the key finding here is I should be able to notice the up and down movement of the chest. So we are seeing the movement of the hands which will detect the up and down movement of the chest. So this is how you should look for movements in the upper zones anteriorly. Now coming to the mid and lower zones, you are going to place hands in this manner and here the movements of the thumb is very very important. So you should keep the two thumbs nearer and you should look for the sideward movement of the thumbs. So whenever patient takes a breath, the chest wall will expand sidewards because of that your thumbs will also be moving sidewards. Again in the upper portion, posteriorly you have to keep your hands like this you ask the patient to take breaths now you see the up and down movements of your uh, palms so in the upper portions it is usually up and down movements whereas in the mid and lower portion it is the sidewards movements now coming to the mid and lower portion posteriorly again i am going to place my hands like this here the movements of thumbs sidewards is very very important so you ask the patient to take respiration now you can see uh, the movements of the thumbs so here the detection of movement of thumb is very very important this is regarding palpation of respiratory movements in the clinical examination an important topic palpation chest measurements and expansion by taking a measuring tape at the level of nipples, we are going to first measure the circumference. It is measured both during inspiration and expiration. The difference is called as expansion. Generally, the expansion will be more than or equal to 5 cm. If it is less, it indicates some sort of disease. In this patient, the expansion was found to be only 2 cm. After measuring the circumference of the chest, next important aspect is you should measure the hemithorax diameter. So measuring the hemithorax diameter can localize the disease whether uh, the right side expansion is decreased or left side expansion is decreased. So how to measure the hemithorax diameter? We place the tape from the midpoint of sternum at the nipple line and we take it to the midpoint of the spine and we measure the hemithorax on both sides. Here I am measuring the right hemithorax diameter. It was found to be 46 centimeter. Initially we do during expiration and then I ask the patient to take inspiration. How much ever uh, the diameter has increased, it is called expansion. In this patient during expiration it was 46 centimeter. And during inspiration, there was 1.5 centimeter of expansion. In the same way, I'm measuring in the left side also. So left side, 
initially the measurement was 40 centimeter and when i asked the patient to take deep inspiration the expansion was only 0.5 centimeter it means there is less expansion predominantly on the left side so it indicates some uh, left lung volume loss the so expansion predominantly decreased in left side so it might be due to some volume loss or the disease is on the left side next important thing is the measurement of transverse diameter and ap diameter so this is how i should measure the transverse diameter so with help of the assistant i place some uh, <coughs> sheets beneath the armpits of the patient and this is how i am going to measure the transverse diameter so the transverse diameter here it was found to be 32 centimeter then coming to the ap diameter because the expansion was very less on the left side i, I measured the ap diameter both on the right and also on the left so this is the position of the sheets that you should place and I am measuring the anterior posterior diameter on the right side it was found to be 20 centimeter the AP diameter on the right it was found to be 20 centimeter whereas if you look on the left it was only 17 centimeter and again this suggests that uh, the lung volume on the uh, left side has significantly declined all this indicates uh, there is some uh, left lung volume loss and also you can notice the drooping of the shoulder this reduced chest wall expansion can be seen in fibrosis collapse COPD ILD generally COPD ILD or bilateral diseases fibrosis collapse and further be differentiated with help of uh, history percussion and auscultation then coming to various shapes based on the diameters normal ap2 transverse diameter is 5 is to 7 it may be increase the ratio increase ap diameter as in COPD. and if the ap diameter is very less it is a flat chest as in fibrosis or malnutrition the important features of volume loss fibrosis or collapse on inspection there can be flattening of the chest with supraclavicular hollowing infraclavicular flattening suprascapular wasting all this indicates the lung volume has decreased on that side crowding of ribs decreased movements drooping of uh, shoulder and also shifting of apex towards the affected side also the trachea will be shifted so all these are suggestive of some uh, pulling lesions on palpation there will be shifting of trachea and apex a bit towards the affected side movements of the chest will be diminished and also there will be reduced expansion on the disease side as seen in this above case i have shown you so this completes the palpation on clinical examination the chest pressure important in palpation the areas of chest and vocal fremitus so for palpation, percussion, auscultation, there are few important areas on the chest. Let us start anteriorly. In the anterior portion, the first important area will be the supraclavicular area. So look carefully, the supraclavicular area, infraclavicular area, mammary area. Then coming to the axillary portion to expose the axillary area you should ask the patient to keep his hands over his head in this manner so here we have axillary infra axillary area then coming to the posterior portion suprascapular area then we have infra scapular areas and to expose the interscapular area you should ask the patient to hold his hands in this manner then only the interscapular area will be very well exposed now to palpate for vocal fremitus i should ask the patient to utter some uh, simple letters such as one one and with the help of the ulnar border of the hand i should palpate for vibration in all the following areas i start with supraclavicular area it has to be done simultaneously both sides infraclavicular area mammary area 
then going to the axillary simultaneously on both sides then infra axillary area then posteriorly i see in the supra scapular area simultaneously also now i am going to to see in the interscapular and infra scapular areas so this is how we palpate for uh, ocal fremitus in all the important areas ocal fremitus is the sound produced by the vocal cords which is transmitted to the chest which is felt by the ulnar border of the hand increased vocal fremitus is seen in consolidation because of solidification of the lung the conduction of the sound will be more you know that solids are the best conductors of the sound and also over level of pleural effusion so whenever there is pleural effusion above that the lung can be compressed and it also can behave like a solid and fibrosis with patent bronchus so whenever there is fibrosis there can be more pull of trachea to one side so whenever trachea is pulled towards one side the sound may be more conducted towards that side decreased vocal fremitus can be seen on pleural effusion pneumothorax so in, in all these conditions the lung may not be able to transmit the sounds properly fibrosis collapse collapse there will be absent vocal fremitus and fibrosis there can be decreased vocal fremitus and also some mass lesions so mass lesions also will not allow the sound to conduct properly so fremitus is something uh, we are feeling with the uh, ulnar border of the hand by asking the patient to utter some uh, letters same thing if you feel with your set it is called as vocal resonance that, that is seen in auscultation of the chest